Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. Today we're going to be doing another Let's Stupid, and this one was highly requested. I got an Instagram DM, and then a lot of you guys in the comments when I brought it up said that you guys wanted to see it. So we are going to be duping the Natasha Denona Safari palette. I do have a few other bonus shades in here, but a few things before we get started. If you're new to this series, I'm going to leave the playlist link down below so you can check it out. I feel like I usually have to do quite a few disclaimers, so here they are. This is obviously my take on the palette using single shadows in my own collection. I like using single shadows because I can arrange them in the palette the exact same way as they are in the original palette. And I feel like as new makeup releases, there might not be completely new colors, but there are new color stories. And there's something about the way that an eyeshadow is configured and the placement of the shadow since color is so relative that I feel like can make a palette look so different than something else. Whereas if you were to rearrange them, they might be more similar than you think. And I find that I get a lot of inspiration when it comes to color stories. So I like to recreate that with these palettes. That all being said, I don't have the palette. If you want the palette, that's awesome. This, more than anything, should hopefully inspire you to go within your own collection, find certain shades. Um, maybe if you find a shadow in here that you like, you can buy that single shadow. And with that being said as well, I understand that sometimes buying the palette is the better value um, than buying a bunch of single shadows. With the Natasha Denona one, it might not be, but um, this is more than anything just supposed to inspire you. You can go within your own collection, find dupes that you might have. Um, these aren't going to be exact. I don't have that palette. I think we hit them all, so let's get into this. I really tried to keep the Safari palette uh, in mind with this, but looking at it and looking at photos, it was a little bit difficult because I felt like um, looking at the Sephora website picture compared to like Temptalia's picture, as well as compared to like the Beauty Bay or Beautylish, um, those pictures looked so different in color. I especially saw differences between the two like yellow shades in one, this middle yellow looks more orange, and then in Another, it looks more yellow and then this looks more brown instead of yellow so I feel like looking at this palette um, compared to depending on which picture you see this might be kind of the vibrant version of the, <laughs> the Natasha Denona Safari palette but I am very happy with it it's definitely more inspiring than I originally thought um, this honestly was not a palette that I was very interested in uh, it was something I knew that I did not want so when it comes to this eye look which there will be a demo at the end I'll leave timestamps I wanted to do something that I would naturally do because a lot of these are very dark shades. It's an all matte palette and I tend to go more bright than I do dark when it comes to like more colorful fun eyeshadow looks. But I'll stop rambling. Let's get into the first shadow. So the first shade in the palette is called Malia and this is something that I feel like is not very hard to dupe necessarily. Maybe like getting it exact exact but it is a light like more peachy pink matte shade. So for that I use the shade Cutie Pie from Luxie Beauty. I'm not sure if this shade is specifically is discontinued, but again, I feel like if you go through your palettes, um, you probably can find something very, very similar to this. Specifically, I feel like Cutie Pie actually does pack a punch. Um, this is a like really light peach shade, but I find when I use it, it really does show a peach on the eyes. And I find that's the same thing when it comes to Natasha Denona shadows as well. Um, in the pan, they might look lighter, but once you get them on the skin, they just like seem to darken up, at least on me. So I felt like this one really worked well for that. And yeah, that's the first shade. I don't have any bonus shades for that one. Moving across, the next shade that we have is Fata Morgana, and the color that I have for that is a shadow from Itzy, and this is the shade Ferrions. Ferrions? I don't know, it has two L's in it. It's a French brand. This is a really beautiful matte blue. I actually put this in my subculture dupe palette as well. Um, I think this will be really great. This is definitely gonna show up a little bit more vibrant than I feel like some of the blues tend to when you use them on the eye. Um, so I thought this was a great addition and it's super matte and it's a really good quality matte blue. I thought that was like one of the better dupes that I had. Next is the shade Rhino and this one was difficult for me. I think this is a very interesting color. I really like the name Rhino. It's kind of this gray green blue shade <laughs> is how I look at it the closest thing I had was Pinehurst this is definitely going more toward the green side as in it's green <laughs> but this is like a matte dark green and I thought that this just complemented the palette well with other colors and this is one of those shades that kind of gives my specific palette more of that uh, 
brightness and pop of color and this one is from Coastal Scents. So it's very affordable. Um, it is Coastal Scents though so you're not going to get Natasha Denona quality from this but I do think that this shadow is great. I really enjoy the shadows from Coastal Scents. If you're balling on a budget I think they work really well. The next shade in the palette is called Stone and this is a light gray. I chose to go with Makeup Geek's Bedrock for this. I honestly don't have a lot of gray shadows. Gray is not a color I normally gravitate to um, so Bedrock was kind of one of the only ones I even really had. But this is a nice shadow and it's great for a transition for some of these other shades in here. I also think that this would be really pretty just all over the um, lid. So I'm going to try experimenting with that, especially as we go into fall and just see what like a gray, like cool toned, like mid gray smoky eye looks like on me, like kind of almost like a one shadow and done thing. So yeah, that is bedrock. And last in the first row is the shade Savannah. And I chose to dupe that with the shade Olive Wood from Coastal Scents. Savannah is this mix of like brown, green, and yellow, I feel like. <laughs> um, and this is more of a olive, like yellow green. I thought this was a pretty good dupe looking at pictures. Uh, if you're looking for a matte olive, I think this one is very, very nice. Again, Coastal Scents so you can really get some bang for your buck on that one. And honestly, I think this first row would make such a pretty eye. I think a lot of the shades in here would work really well across um, for color stories if you're looking for inspiration on how to use them uh, in a cohesive look. The next shade in the palette is Aya, and I chose to dupe it with ColourPop's Issues. I think this also might be discontinued. I hate that they do that, and I know I'm sorry if you were looking for like specific shadows, um, but I like putting in my discontinued or limited edition stuff, stuff that I still have in my collection because I'm assuming that someone else out there bought it at one point. I can't be the only one that bought it so if you have issues, <laughs> I got issues. I like set myself up for that one didn't I? This one might be a good one. It is a soft peach shade. You also could do something like I think is it Beaches and Cream from Makeup Geek or something like that. This one is a bit more of like a warm toned peachy uh, instead of like a more cool toned pinky peach from the first one. Use whatever you have in your collection. There are a lot of things. Orange Soda from Anastasia is another good one so that's just what I chose for this. Next in the palette is the shade Thorn and this is one that I think is really beautiful and I also feel like at the same time is probably the most dupable um, if you guys like a more warm brown that's been trendy for the last like three years. I chose to go with Oktoberfest from Coastal Scents. Mine is very beat up. It's been cracked and broken. I've had the shade for a really long time but it's honestly one of my favorites. I think that they really did a great job with this specific shade. It's trendy. I think the formula is really great. So if you're looking for a warm brown, this is a great one. So that's it swatched there. And I am wearing that on my lid today. The next shade is something that I feel like is maybe not the best. It was, again, really hard with pictures. Um, this is Desert Date. And I chose to go with the shade Pumpkin Spice Life from Luxie Beauty. Now this one definitely is a bit more just in general saturated um, as well as a bit more yeah, yellow, orange, and bright, <laughs> but I think this is beautiful. I'm wearing this today. I put it all over my lid and then put the uh, Oktoberfest shade on top of it. It's just beautiful. It screams fall to me, and I feel like this palette is very fall. So if you're looking for a bit more of an amped up version, you're wanting kind of one of those orangey mustard shades, this one's great. The next color in the palette is very similar to Thorn, but this is Shea. It's slightly darker and slightly less warm. I decided to go with a shade from Itzy again. This is the shade Chocolate, and it is a nice nice, really saturated brown. This doesn't have that much warmth to it, and I think it will really help to deepen up any looks in this palette, in my palette specifically. It's quite chocolatey in nature. I really like this one, and I love that it's not too warm, so it can kind of play with some of those more gray shades as well. And last for this row, we have the shade Tribe. Now, when I was first looking at this, I thought this color was pretty dang good, but this one seems maybe a little bit more orange, and I feel like swatched, this also looks a lot different than it does in the pan. This is from Coastal Scents. It's the shade Baked Clay, and this is a red but I find that it kind of it's just way brighter um, than I guess I expect and it almost has like this pinky undertone there's not as much orange to it as I would like and also not necessarily as much depth but I think that it still looks good in the palette you could use this all over the lid you would definitely need to build it up this isn't necessarily my favorite shadow from Coastal Scents it's not the worst but you definitely need to build it up it would work well to kind of like sheer out something or add some warmth when you're blending out you could build it up though if you really wanted to and I do have a bonus shadow actually for Tribe or what I have is Baked Clay this is Cannonball from Colourpop and it's just 
basically like a traditional orange so if you're looking for something more like that this is a great color I believe it's one of their pressed pigments that is if you want more of an orange or just like another option we're moving on to the last row already the first shade in the last row is called Lotus this is a really beautiful pink color and I decided to go with ColourPop's flower boy I feel like flower boy shows up in so many of these let's stupids um, I believe it is discontinued but I do have a couple other options hopefully those are at least available this is is a corally pink and this one is brighter and a bit more saturated than the one in the palette but I honestly feel like potentially that one is more pigmented and bright than you expect once you get it on your eyes I went with flower boy as my official pick but for some runner-ups I have first kiss here from Luxie Beauty this is I mean very similar this shade is a little bit different than other Luxie Beauty I actually put it on top um, this is a bit more sheer but I think it works well and would work well for Lotus and then if you want a makeup geek option this one is the shade cupcake and it's a bit more cool toned and like dusty mauve so uh, it's definitely different than the other two but it was something similar so I wanted to bring it up and show you guys the next shade in the palette is called Amara and this is a really beautiful um, rusty coral with it like a softness to it I decided to go with the shade terracotta so again I think this is a bit more pigmented but I just I love this I think it works really well with the rest of the palette you could do something very similar with this and like baked clay and do more of like a monochromatic look or you can use this like deepen up a shade of something else I really love this shadow specifically from Luxie as well so that one's a really great one and I feel like it's a perfect like fall orangey brown staple so the next shade in here um forgive me if I say this wrong I think it's Maasai maybe for that color I decided to go with going steady from ColourPop this is a beautiful like burgundy maroon it has more of like a purple to it than it does a red this is just a great shade I honestly really enjoy this color this one ends up in a lot of my uh, let's do bits as well so that one's great I love the color pop formula too I haven't mentioned that but it's great next to that shade in the palette is the color voodoo and I decided to go with makeup geeks cherry cola another one that ends up in a lot of these videos this is a very like deep red brown shade and I think this will work really well it actually looks kind of purple I've said this about this color before but you really do kind of have to build it up it's not quite as pigmented as you expect looking at it in the pan as it swatches but I find that it builds up nicely it's still a great quality shadow so that one I think works really well for voodoo and the last shade is the one I have like a ton of dupes for so let me uh, <laughs> let me get my hand cleaned off and I will go into the last color the last shade in the palette is called tamarind and this one was really hard for me to find an exact dupe for um, I feel like I have a lot of shades that are very similar to this so hopefully you have one of these or it'll give you an option if you're looking for that shade specifically the one that I used officially in my palette is officially just sounds so funny to me this is paper tiger from ColourPop it's what I have on my eyes today I have it on my lower lash line I have it blended out into the crease uh, I think this is a great like mustardy kind of like Dijon mustard yellow shade it has some brown in it um, it has a little bit of green in it as well really beautiful so I highly suggest that color it's great it's easy to get a hold of as well when looking at this palette I also immediately thought of desert sands from makeup geek this is one of those shades that got a lot of hype um, when you know it first came out this one's definitely more brown and not as yellow so if you're looking for something like that um, it's beautiful and it's one of those shades that really brings out blue eyes so highly suggest that color as well another shade is honey bun from from Luxie. I believe this one was limited edition. I don't know if you can still get it. So if you can't, you know, don't worry about it. You have some other options. But if you have it, this one is a really great option as well. And I did have one other shade here. This is Beach Blanket from uh, ColourPop. And this one is just like a bit more orange. And I don't know. It's different than Paper Tiger for sure. It doesn't have as much yellow. I put it on the top there. So um, if you guys were interested, I'm not sure if that color is also available. I know it was part of like the summertime releases like last year, I think. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed the, those dupes. I don't know how exact they were, but definitely this palette, at least my version of it, inspires me more than I thought it would. But even looking at my version, to me, personally and how I like to do makeup this is more of a companion palette so definitely keep that in mind um, I would really look hard at this palette 
what do you want from it what really stands out and see if you have something very similar to that in your collection already $129 is not something that is easily stomachable for a lot of people so if you're gonna spend the money I want to make sure that it's something you're really gonna love and use and if you feel like it's right for you I want you to go for it and enjoy it and love it and use it all the time but if not and there's only a couple colors maybe you could find something you already have looking at this I feel like the subculture palette if that worked for you is very similar to this in a lot of ways it has those matte greens it has those matte blues has the yellow has the orange has a lot of the colors that I use to dupe that palette in here so that would be something to look at I would take a look at that if that formula worked for you and see if you can get away with just returning back to that subculture palette. That all being said, if you guys want to see how I did this look today, um, stay tuned for the demo. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the Let's Do It and let's get into the demo. All right, guys, so let's get started on this look using my faux Natasha Denona Safari palette. To start off everything, I'm going to go in with this shade here and I'm just going to be lying down or laying down a base um, on my my whole lid so this look today is going to be very fall I really want to accentuate like the mustard like warm browns I don't think that's that different I guess compared to potentially other palettes or other shadows and stuff out there but when I look at this palette that's what I want to do with it and so I'm gonna make the look I'm inspired to create using these shades so I'm gonna roughly dust that everywhere on my lid and into my crease so that gave me kind of a light creamsicle kind of look. I'm going to go in now with this color here. I believe it's Paper Tiger from Colourpop. And I'm just going to be working this into the crease. I want that um, like orangey yellow to be pretty blown out. So I'm just going to be working it pretty high and I'm going to be taking it into that inner corner just as much as I am the outer. Uh, this is a bit more of like a rounded eye, or like a rounded smoky mustard eyes kind of the vibe we're going for. I think because this palette is all mattes, it's a great like companion palette. I usually don't do all matte looks, especially in these colors. So for me, I wanted to create an eye that I could use all mattes with that I would naturally do. Uh, and I feel like this kind of, I think people have called it like a French smoky eye, um, where you have it like darkest on your lid and you kind of gradiate up. That is kind of the best way to use um, all mattes to me if you're gonna go with something. I mean, you can obviously do just like crease and outer corner, but I feel like it fills that lid space and still makes it kind of a statement um, while still working with it being all matte really well. And I'm taking it again pretty high, like right under the brow bone. For the lid, I'm going to be taking a shader brush. This one is flat, or, but it's still fluffy. Hopefully that makes sense. And I'm going to be taking the middle yellow shade. This is a lot more uh, yellow and a little bit darker. And we're going to be placing that all on the entire lid. Now that I have that worked onto the lid, I'm going to be taking that shade and a blending brush. And I'm just going to start blending that into the crease uh, and just getting a nice gradient between those two colors. And I might go back and forth between the original like yellow shade we used and that a bit more, I guess, orangey shade. And I really like the way that's going, but next I'm going to be adding even a darker shade onto the lid. I'm going to go in with this shade here from Coastal Scents. I believe it's Oktoberfest. And we're going to be putting that on the very base of the lid. This is going to be the darkest color we're going to use. If you wanted to, you could always go in with this even darker shade and make a gradient between all four of those colors. Um, but for me, I kind of want to keep it still lighter. So I'm just going to be putting that over the entire lid and we will be blending out in a second. I kind of wanted it just to go back to brown instead of uh, so orange. And I'm bringing that up a little bit higher than I normally would because again, we're having that blown out pretty far. So I'm kind of exaggerating my crease. I really want to have like nice like bold like browned, bright, big eyes. And sometimes to really solidify that color by the lash line, I'll even take my finger and just pat along. Now I'm gonna go back in with this uh, second blending brush we used. I'm going in with the first color and I'm starting that gradient. I didn't wanna add too much of that orange, so that's why I'm going into that yellow instead. And we're just going to be going back and forth between the brown and that yellow. And I'm going back in with the first brush we used just to kind of do an overall blend. All right, we're moving on to the lower lash line. I wanna make this, again, really blown out. So I'm going in with that first yellow shade and we're gonna be putting that pretty far down, blending it into the lower lash line and blending it into the upper half of the look we've already done. And I'm bringing it all the way in. I know we had a little bit of fallout. I'm kind of just blending over that. And to help with that, I'm taking the fluffier blending brush that we already used the yellow on 
just kind of going over that line. I'm not adding any new product to it because uh, I don't want to be too crazy. This is going to help bring it down. When it comes to shadows, I feel like that's kind of like the eye look done. I am going to go in with my highlighter that I used and put it on the inner corner. Now I know this palette does not have like a highlight shade that has shimmer in it. So if you want, you could always do that matte. I just, I want a little bit of shine. And I'm bringing it down the tear duct just like a little bit. For liner today, I'm gonna to be using this Makeup Geek one. This is in the shade Spice and it's just a brown shade. I'm gonna be putting a little bit on the lower lash line and I'm gonna blend that out with my fingers. And then I am gonna also tight line. I'm gonna put some mascara on and then I will be back to finish up the look with the lip. Now that I have my mascara on, I do wanna add just even more yellow. So I'm going back in with Paper Tiger and I'm just gonna carry it a little bit below so you can see it under the mascara. And for my lip, I'm going in with the shade Freckle, which is um, Samantha Ravindahl's collab with Nude Sticks. I was gonna say ColourPop, Nude Sticks. And I'm gonna put that on my lips. It's a really pretty like burgundy neutral shade. All right, I think that's as even on the lip as we're gonna get. So I hope you guys enjoyed the demo and tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed the earlier part of the video as well, all the dupes. And other than that, I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.